Today, I'm going to take you through the process of implementing a GTA style fall into advanced locomotion system. If you find this video helpful, make sure you go check out our Patreon in the description below. We also have our Discord server. If you want to hang out and chat with other developers that are like-minded, it's a great place to go and hang out, ask questions, uh, give suggestions. A lot of useful sites and tips are in there. Also, if I have an update or something that is a fix that I haven't officially posted to the YouTube channel, I do post those in a channel there. So it's a great place to kind of keep up to date uh, between YouTube videos. So. Make sure you check that out. Like, subscribe this uh, this video here. Hit the bell so you get notifications of future videos. And let's get started. So make sure that you have a fresh install of Advanced Locomotion System or one that you're using in your project. Uh, this should be able to implement with any type of Advanced Locomotion Systems install, even if it's merged with something else. Uh, it, you may see something that looks a little bit different, but it should be pretty close to this. So what we want to start with is the ALS base character. So you should have here content and then advanced locomotion V3. Under blueprints, you have ALS base character. Go ahead and open that up. Inside of there, we're going to need to find the do every frame. And then right here in the middle, it should open up by default. You'll see event tick, a sequence, and then do every frame. Go ahead and open up that do every frame. Now here, uh, we're going to be working to the right some. So you see that there's a ragdoll and do well ragdolling. Uh, that's where we're going to be making changes in into this section. So uh, part of it will be the falling section. Right now, there's not any uh, anything coming off of this is falling. We're going to be leaving this do well ragdolling here the same. Uh, this things that are locally controlled and the do well grounded, we're leaving all that the same. What I want to do is drag off of falling and let's do a sequence because we're going to execute a couple things in a row here. I'm going to move this, straighten these out. So if I click and then control click the other box, I can hit Q and it makes that line straight for me. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to create a variable. And let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, currently we have, make sure it doesn't exist already. Okay, so start fall. We need one that is going to count so at the beginning of start fall, and then we'll count over time to determine how long you've been falling. So to do this, let's do a do once off of then zero. Okay. Uh, and then above that, do right click and do get real time seconds. Okay, so that's in preparation. From that get real time seconds, let's go and drag off of there. And this is where we're going to create that variable. So promote to variables. So once you drag off, you know that option, promote to variable. And let's call it start fall. And you don't, you can do use camel case here. You don't need to put a space and you'll see it puts the space there for you. Then go ahead and connect up completed to that variable. And that's all we're going to do for that first sequence. Now we're going to be doing some things where we need an, a custom event. Uh, we're going to have a custom event that happens when we want to reset the fall. So pretty much to get back up and things like that. So right click and let's do custom event. And then we're going to do add custom event. We're going to call this one reset fall. You can put a space there. You don't have to. I'm going to not put a space. And then from this, let's do a sequence. Now, what we're going to do is for the first step, the then zero, we want that to reset this do once. So right now it's counting. So it's when you're falling, it starts counting the fall. But whenever you land and you're going to get back up, we need to reset that because this is only going to start this timer once. So while you're filing, filing it will start the timer or well, set the variable with the beginning time. And then uh, we have something that's going to be counting this. How, how long ago uh, the fall started. And then we want to reset that as soon as you land so that it will then go through. And if you start falling again, mark the time. 
All right, now uh, we need to go to another do once, but what we're gonna do is bring it off of this then one because we want to start the timer here. And then from this then one, we're gonna do a branch. We've got a number of things we're gonna be adding. So let's go ahead and bring it to the right here. I'm gonna double click on the pin here to, uh, to give ourselves a little bit of room and have it look nice. So we're going to, need to do another get time real get real time seconds. So you can select that. Hit Control C and Control V. We're going to bring it down and just to the right of the bottom sequence there. And I want it to subtract. So we're going to do a minus. And you'll see float minus float. What I want to subtract the real time seconds for is to know how long has it been since we started falling. So we have this start fall variable that we set. It's setting the time. Now drag to the bottom from the left hand side. You see start fall. Drag it to the bottom one. You see it connects there. It's going to subtract the real time seconds from the start fall. We're going to drag off of uh, the end of that minus and do a greater than. So float greater than float. If it's greater than one, then we're going to determine this branch. So nothing's going to happen if it's not greater than one. That means that uh, you haven't been falling for very long. Uh, so what would this is ending up doing in the long run is if you're falling for a certain period of time, you automatically ragdoll. So you can jump and I'm giving it about one second. You could play with that number and get it closer to what you consider a normal jump time. But this will, uh, this will after one second currently, uh, start go to true. And then we're going to put in some things to make it Ragdoll. So from this true, let's go ahead and do another do once. Uh, what we want to do now is when you reset the fall, we want to reset this do once as well. So I'm going to drag from this then one to the reset. I'm going to double click and kind of clean this up a little bit. Okay. And now, uh, what we want to do is after this do once happens, so yes, you've been falling more than one second. I'm going to do it only once, but we are going to do a, from completed, to ragdoll event. Now, this is going to call the ragdoll. This is going to make it so you start to ragdoll. And then we're going to set a variable, but we haven't, uh, we haven't made this variable yet. It's going to be called fell down. Uh, see, it doesn't exist. So what we need to do is under variables, hit the plus on the left hand side. It's created a Boolean. If it doesn't create a Boolean, maybe it makes a float or something. You need to go to the drop down on the right hand side, set that to Boolean. And then let's call this fell down. Uh, I now want to drag this out and do a set. So from the two ragdoll event, I'm now going to say, okay, you're ragdolling, you fell down. Uh, now, uh, the thing is we set it once, uh, and then what we want to do is unset that. Uh, so in this sequence, we're going to add another one. We're going to call add pin here from the reset fall to sequence. And then we want to do another set. So drag fell down and do a set there on the left. Drag then two to that set and leave it unchecked. So we're going to set fell down and then we're going to unset fell down. So this should be the initial section uh, of code that we need. Of course, we're not calling reset fall anywhere yet. It will be doing this uh, setting of a variable here. Uh, and then it will be when you're falling, going through here uh, and checking this branch. But we've got a, a little more to do in another section. So let's go to the to do while ragdolling. So you should be in the same section here. section here. You'll see ragdoll and then do while ragdolling. Go ahead and open that up. And then we want to go to the very end. And everything should be good up to this point. You can see here we're setting the actor rotation. Uh, but we want to do some things between the is networked and the set actor rotation. So drag to the right, give yourself a little bit of room. And then drag all these nodes that are to the right of set actor rotation and move those over as well. What we're going to do is from this set actor rotation, we're going to do a branch. And we need to set some things to determine this branch. 
So first what we want is right click on the lower left and do get ragdoll velocity. This should already be a value that's there. I'm going to drag off of that and do a vector length. And choose the just the one that says vector length. Drag off of that and do a less than. So float less than float. And put in there five. So what we're doing is finding that if you uh, if you're going a certain speed, you're ragdolling. Uh, once you start to slow down, which means you've impacted, you've landed, you've slowed down, uh, we want it to where you start to unragdoll, you start to get up. Uh, but we need to make sure that you're actually fell down before we do this. Um, we want to make sure that we call this in the proper order. So just do an and from that Boolean that's theirs. So and, and we want to check that fell down variable. So on the left here, go and drag fell down and drag it to the bottom. You'll see there it connects it up. So we want to make sure that you're going less than five, not miles per hour, but you know, speed in uh, in Unreal, which means it, it is pretty slow. 300, 600, those are the type of numbers you're usually dealing with. Uh, and then we want that. So I'm going to move this over to the left a little bit more. And then drag that into condition. So we're checking that you fell down, that you're not rolling around and, and still moving. And then that'll determine what you do. Uh, we want to do a sequence from that true. You see, it just adds ones in between. Uh, and then we're going to do some things below. We want this to continue, then one, or then zero to continue to is networked. That's fine. But we want this false to go over to the is networked as well. Uh, and then you can double click the pins on there and move it so they go around that nicely. There you go. So it should look something like that. Now off of then one, we're going to add some stuff here below. I'm going to give myself a little bit more room. So drag from then one. And then let's do a delay. We don't want it to happen right away. I'm going to do a half a second delay before you get up. So it'll lay there for a second. Once that half a second is done, let's call the unragdoll event. So it's unragdoll event. And then we need to reset fall, which is that, uh, that custom event that we created earlier. So we've, we're going unragdoll. We set reset falls so that if you fall again, it, it now has a fresh timer and everything. And so let's go and call that. So reset fall. And there we go. So that's the, about the uh, amount of space that we need. So you can see this is going to fall. Then one is coming down here. Uh, I think that that should be correct for this section. Uh, there is one more thing that we need to do in vent on landed. So let's go ahead and go back. So we're in the play proper place, the ALS space character in the event graph, but we need to be in a different section there. So on the top where it says event graph, go ahead and click that. Or on the left side, you could double click event graph there, see if it takes you there. Uh, and then we need to find on event landed. That's in the default character events. And you'll see that's right in the middle here. And open that up. You see at the bottom where it says on landed. We're good everywhere here, except for we just need to add that reset fall. So every time you land, we want to add the reset fall. So type reset fall. And that should be it. So let's go ahead and give it a try. And let's see, let's see how it behaves. I'm going to save that. I'll do a save all here. It shouldn't have affected anything. It's going to save the map. Let's hit play and let's see what it does. All right. So you'll see it acts pretty normal. I'm going to do a jump. You see it starts to ragdoll because I jumped for a long time and it gets back up. Uh, if I do a short jump, now that's where you'd want to tweak that amount of time that it does before it ragdolls. Uh, you can increase that. And it will uh, and it will make it so that it's less sensitive. I have it pretty sensitive in this setting, but you can play with the numbers, get it how you want it to be. Uh, and let's do one more thing. I'll show you a falling. So let's go ahead and jump up here. And then rather than jumping, oops, I almost made it up there a little bit too long of a jump. I have it a little bit sensitive. Oof. Yeah. They barely, if I don't land right away. Oh, he just, he won't, he doesn't even want to do it. <laughs> we'll give it one more try. 
Okay. Be very focused. All right. So now let's go ahead and fall. Uh, see, that wasn't long enough. If I had a higher ledge here, it would fall. You can see face planted. The second that I stop moving, maybe you have a high velocity fly out of the windshield of a car. You'll ragdoll. Uh, as soon as you stop rolling around, you'll get back up and run. So hopefully that helps you. It's a fun little feature. <laughs> it does some funny things. Play with the numbers. But that should be pretty well what you need to do a GTA style ragdoll event. If you like this video, make sure you go check out our uh, Patreon. If you want to help support future videos, that's where you do it. Also, we have our Discord, a great place to hang out with other developers, like-minded people. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the bell for this for future notifications of videos. Thank you very much, and I will catch you all later.